gacha games. Before I actually get into the weirdness that is gacha game crossovers, I have to explain what a gacha game actually is. So, what is a gacha game? No, it's not that stupid cringy gacha stuff, life, whatever the crap it is that kids are playing these days. Gacha games are the adults domain, they're for grown ass men and women due to how gambly and filled with numbers they are. Gacha games are traditionally anime based mobile games, or just online games in general that make use of a gachapon system. You put premium currency, tickets, or real life money into a roulette wheel, so you can claim your favorite 2D waifu as your own. I like it because of the Chinese zombie aesthetic, not because she's a lolly, shut up. Gachapon comes from these old gacha machines in Japan where you put a coin in, turn the wheel, and get a random prize. You know, like that one scene from Steins Gate. Gacha games are usually made for pre-existing franchises, such as Dragon Ball having Dokkan Battle and Dragon Ball Legends and One Piece having treasure crews and bonbons, <laughs> lol, as well as numerous others. However, there are plenty of examples of gacha games that aren't based on pre-existing properties. One of the biggest of which is some that you've probably heard of before, a little gem called Genshin Impact. Spoiler alert, we'll, we'll be talking about this game later on. However, this video's sponsor is a gacha game that's even bigger. You guessed it, I'm sponsored by... <laughs> really not sponsored. Wish I was though. But technically, despite not being weeby, Raid is a gacha game. It's weird to think that the funny meme game that's on more YouTube videos than phones is in the same realm as Dragon Ball Candy Crush, but it, it is. So now explain what the title of this pile of gold video is about. What is a way to get hardcore, monster drinking, Reddit searching, body pillow licking, weeby ass gamers to spend money? That's right, limited time events. How do you make them spend even more money on said limited time events? Make those events tie in with something else that the Weeby Gamer loves. That's what a crossover or collaboration is in gacha games. I'll give you a pretty tame and average example, a pretty logical example of a gacha game crossover, so you can understand why some of the weirder ones later on in this video are really frigging weird. Okay, for example, back in like 2015, 2016, the aforementioned Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle did a crossover with One Piece Treasure Cruise. It made sense as at the time the two games were relatively new and are both owned by Toei and Bandai, both are shown in Jump franchises, so this collaboration made a lot of sense. On a tangent, unfortunately, this is the only non-Dragon Ball crossover Dokkan Battle has ever done, even though its 7 year anniversary is currently active on the Japanese version of the game. It's crossed over with other Dragon Ball properties like Dragon Ball Fusion, Dragon Ball Heroes, but nothing outside of Dragon Ball besides One Piece. Same with Treasure Cruise, the only collaboration that isn't One Piece related is its crossover with Dokkan in 2015-2016. Also, when a collaboration occurs between two gacha games, sometimes they'll go both ways in the case of Treasure Cruise and Dokkan. We got a new boss battle for both games. Freezer was a boss in One Piece, and Doflamengo was a boss in Dokkan. Okay, anyway, from this example, despite it being ages ago, <laughs> actually on a side note, I remember this event way back in the day. It was like six, seven years ago now. Holy shoot, I'm old. <laughs> Overall, it was a pretty logical collaboration. It kind of fit perfectly and was really flipping and hype at the time. Now we're gonna talk about the less logical crossovers and less hype the further we go. And the further we go, the weirder it'll get. We'll start with some crossovers that are pretty tame, but further down the list we go, the further we'll delve into the realm of madness. Let's start with the gacha game that has had slash had crossovers that make relative sense. Let's start off pretty weeby as well. I mean, we're talking about gacha games, so most of the video is going to be pretty weeby, so, you know, duh. Overlord Mass for the Dead. A gacha game that was pretty cool when it was active for the Western world. Whilst it was globally active, it had a couple of cool collaboration events. It collaborated with Konosuba and mother friggin' Berserk. I do like Berserk, so it was a match made in heaven for me specifically. You could get Skull Knight, Shiaki, Berserk Armor Guts, Griffith. It was pretty sick. It was just unfortunate that I got the major shaft on this event. Can I please pull a single Berserk character? No. Before the global servers shut down for this game, it also did a crossover with Konosuba. This makes a little bit less sense than Berserk to be honest, but still not a stretch. Berserk, like Overlord, is a dark fantasy anime slash manga, but Overlord is a light novel first and foremost, but whatever. Konosuba, yeah, it's a fantasy, I guess, but both series appeared in Isekai Quartet, so it still makes sense, just a bit of a thematic clash. However, 
Just because the game shut down for us filthy westerners, it doesn't mean the game stopped in Japan. No, 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 no. It continued in Japan and has since done crossovers with Shield Hero, Cautious Hero, Spider Hero, ReZero Hero, Little Nazi Girl Hero, and Date Alive for some godforsaken reason. Remember Date Alive? <laughs> I forgot it was even a thing until I was researching this video, to be honest. I also realised that most of these crossovers are all isekai that have shown up in isekai quartet. So, they aren't strange. Except Date Alive and Berserk, but I, I, I just don't get why Date Alive is here. That's the only property out of these crossovers I don't like and has nothing in common with Overlord that I'm aware of. Anyway, let's move away from this weeby stuff for like one segment. Let's talk about Raid Shadow Legends. The hit new blah 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 blah. You've, you've heard that rubbish before. So let's talk about Raid. Really wish I was sponsored, but I'm not. So Raid. What is it to actually say about it in regards to collaborations? It has Ninja for some reason. That's all I really got. I never really went into Raid, but I would sell out so goddamn fast if they wanted to sponsor me. But right now, I'm not really a huge fan of Raid, but just saying, my opinion of the biggest hit mobile RPG would really change fast if you paid me. Just saying. Okay, yeah. Enough shilling for the West like a capitalist dog. Let's get weird with it and actually talk about some of the more out there crossovers that make me question God. Okay. Genshin Impact. Genshin Impact? Ha! More like Genshin Impact! Genshin has only really had one major crossover so far. And it was kind of out of left field in my opinion. I remember seeing ads for it on YouTube last year. If you logged into Genshin around the beginning of September 21, you would get Alloy from Horizon... Horizon? Horizon Zero Dawn. Fuck my accent. I personally have only one question about this crossover. Why? I don't see the correlation between spinning a roulette wheel for t big titty 2D women in a Breath of the Wild clone and a game about woman who shoot boat robot. I, I don't see the reasoning behind this crossover event, except that some of the characters in Genshin use a ball. I, re I, I have no clue. This was weird. Her design just looks strange to me in Genshin. Like, in Genshin, she looks like an NPC that would give you boring fetch quests. It doesn't look right to me. And to most people who play the game, <laughs> she's bottom tier anyway, so this event seems like a pile of wank. However, Genshin might be getting even weirder with crossovers because some Genshin fans are really convinced that there's going to be a crossover with Overwatch for some reason, which is still a big question mark to me. Yes, some crossovers that have nothing to do with each other can be awesome. Best example, of course, is Kingdom Hearts. Even though that franchise has a multitude of problems, the games themselves and the crossover between Final Fantasy and Disney works somehow. Only when Final Fantasy characters are actually in the game, though. If there's a crossover between Overwatch and Genshin, it'll be very whatever. Unless Genji's summonable. If, if Genji's a banner character, bro, I'm selling this PC for him. He's just a bit of Raiden with the colour green, but he's still so cool. Anyway, let's get weirder. We haven't actually gotten into the really weird or... This is only questionable at this point, so let's jump into some more cursed stuff. Seven Deadly Sins Grand Cross. I'm a relative newbie on this gacha game, but it seems to be doing well. I recently decided to join this game, and to be honest, this game is the reason I decided to make this video in the first place. In most gacha games, you can choose a friend or a random person's character to help you in a mission. And when I was doing that, I noticed something. I looked down at my friends list in Seven Deadly Sins and realised, is that fucking Hellboy? Let's just go down the list of crossover events that Seven Deadly Sins Grand Cross has had in its short life of only about like two years or so, and we'll be able to see how things get progressively more eyebrow raising. So, it crossed over with that time I got reincarnated as a slime. I'm a big fan of this series, and it makes sense. It's a fantasy anime, and it also has its own gacha game. But to be honest, I genuinely wish I was playing Grand Cross when this sodding event happened because I'm a huge fan of Seven Deadly Sins and Slime and I missed my chance to get Slime. I mean, if you couldn't tell I'm a big fan of Slime Boy, just look at my profile picture. Also, just look at me stroking this Slime. Okay, it also crossed off with ReZero. Okay, I can still see it. It's another fantasy anime, so it still makes a relative amount of sense. Okay, not too bad. It also crossed over with Attack on Titan. Okay, it's getting a bit more out of left field here. You could argue Attack on Titan is a fantasy anime, and I can see why they would do it because Attack on Titan's always been relatively popular, so okay. I can see why they did it. Doesn't make a huge amount of sense, but okay. They also crossed over with King of Fighters 98. Okay, this is getting a little weirder. 
it's a stretch, but King of Fighters also has its own popular gacha game itself. So it makes a little bit of sense, you know, trying to combine the demographics of people who play Grand Cross and King of Fighters All-Stars. It's a bit of a stretch, but okay. I can see why they would cross over. But because of this collaboration, I get to see Terry Bogard as a cool anime buff guy, so I'm not complaining. And yeah, it collaborated with Stranger Things. What the f- Yeah, in this game, you can have Terry Bogard, Eren Yeager, Friggy. Rem, and Eleven on the same team. That team composition is trash and totally not viable in a competitive scenario. But you get what I'm saying. This is weird. The fact that I can have Finn Wolfhard fight alongside Rimuru Tempest whilst they try to destroy the Demon King is very peculiar, in my opinion. I really don't get why this collab would happen, to be honest. I mean, even these character designs are uncanny to me. And on top of that, they just gave Hellboy 2.0 over here an Olympia, which kind of clashes with the whole fantasy demons and druids aesthetic that, you know, Seven Deadly Sins has got going on. I mean, whatever. It doesn't matter. I made... I genuinely just made this segment because I'm salty that I don't have my favourite slime boy on my team in a Sodding. gacha game. That's the problem with limited time events. I always feel robbed, even though I never got the chance to be robbed. Let's get a little bit stranger with this next gacha game. <laughs> get it? Stranger. <laughs> this is why you watch my videos. Not for the over-analysis of creepy Korean music videos. It's for the highbrow comedy. This game actually ties into something I said two minutes ago. It's a stretch, but King of Fighters also has its own popular gacha game itself. KOF All-Star Battle has a laundry list of collaborations, so let's do the same as we did before and just go through them as quickly as possible as they progressively get really friggin' weird. It crossed over with Tekken 7. Makes sense. Tekken and KOF, both popular fighting game franchises, it works. Samurai Showdown, again, makes sense. Both relatively popular fighting game franchises, but the it has a really weird live action trailer. Still pretty dope though. It also crossed over with Dead or Alive, another fighting game. Makes sense. Granted, Dead or Alive has a lot more tits than most fighting games, but hey, still makes sense. It crossed over with Guilty Gear as well, an anime fighting game, a great anime fighting game, unbiased opinion, so yet still makes sense for this crossover. Seven Nights, an anime mobile game. Uh, I don't know anything about Seven Nights, I just know that it's a relatively popular anime gacha game. Besides that, I know nothing, so it probably makes sense, I don't know. And it also crossed over with Gintama. Not gonna lie, this is Jesus Christ, how much does this boy have to swear? I don't get why Gintoki is in this game, but I love Gintama, so sure. Oh look, there's Melio from Seven Deadly Sins, I guess. They crossed over both ways at the same time. That's, that's pretty cool. Okay, we've got some characters from Seven Deadly Sins, that's pretty cool. Still about, st still really out of left field, but you know, still pretty cool. Alright, WWE. They got, they got John Cena. They, they, fuck, they even got The Rock. They even got The Undertaker out of retirement, bro. They also got these lovely people from the wiki I don't care about, but you know. They got the flabbergasting Rock, dude. I feel like this image alone encapsulates how weird some gacha game crossovers can affect a gacha game over a long period of time. <laughs> Goddamn, over a long period of time. This image scares me. Kasumi from Dead or Alive with Saul Bad Guy, who's the good guy of Guilty Gear, by the way. And Saul Bad Guy, who is actually the good guy, of course. The Rock from WWE, with Rock Howard from King of Fighters, whilst in the back, Heihachi Mishima from Tekken and Meliodas from Seven Deadly Sins support them. What the actual f Final Fantasy Brave Exvius. This game is the fucking Fortnite of mobile games, okay? Um, with the others, I'd go through the list of collaborations the game has done in the past, but I don't want to do that here. I can explain how weird this game's collaborations are in two simple, simple words. Are you ready? Two words, okay? Goddamn Ariana Grande. This is real, by the way. I don't know why, but it's real. The Final Fantasy gacha has had a few other weird crossovers, like Just Cause, Deus Ex, Tomb Raider, Full Metal Alchemist, and Katy Perry. Wait, what? But most of the crossovers can simply be explained by the fact that Square Enix own all of those. But how in the hell do you explain, or even justify, Pop Sensation and Dan Schneider Hugger? <laughs> can I even say that? How can you explain a logical reason of these two being in the same media format, let alone the same game? 
with Stranger Things and Seven Deadly Sins, I guess you could be like, oh well, they're both owned by Netflix, so I guess that makes sense. But with this, I have no idea how people sit in a meeting and go, yep, that makes sense. Ariana Grande is in more video games than Senator Armstrong at this point. I want you to sit down and think about that. We've got to have a quick honourable mention here. Unison League. This is kind of just the king, pretty much. These are less weird and more expansive in regards to crossovers. If there's an anime mobile game, it's crossed over with it. Or if there's just a random popular anime series, it's probably crossed over with it. It's genuinely weird how much this game has crossed over with stuff. It's even crossed over with some of the properties I mentioned earlier on this list. Wow, we're coming full circle here. It's crossed over with Konosuba, Seven Deadly Sins, Full Metal Alchemist, Evangelion, Fate Stay and Night Unlimited Blade Works, Madoka Magica, Fairy Tail, Dan Machi, Yu Yu Hakusho, and even Hatsune Miku. Have you heard of Hatsune Miku? Nothing too weird here, just really cool to mention in my opinion. So yeah, those were some of the weird gacha game crossovers I could find. If there's any more I could think of, let me know. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching this video. Feel free to let me know what you thought of this type of video. If you enjoyed it, please like the video and feel free to let me know in the comments. And if you didn't like the video, uh, please comment why you didn't and I will argue why you're objectively wrong. I don't want this channel just to be the Vivinos an analysis channel, so please let me know your thoughts on this type of video. And if you enjoyed this one, go back and take a look at some of my old videos. There are a lot of the same stuff. If I missed a gacha game that's got a really weird crossover, please feel free to let me know. You know if, if you think I should make a sequel to this, free, tell me. Feel free to follow me on Twitch and join my Discord. So yeah, with that being said, fellas, thank you again for watching. Can't thank you enough. And yeah, doodles my doodles. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Peace.